Hi everyone, welcome to MLTMC QN Notes. In this video, I am discussing about questions and answers from Zeal Nielsen's chaining. First question Tuberculosis is transmitted by Option A blood transfusion, Option B fecal infection, Option C droplet infection, Option D oral infection. Here the answer is option C droplet infection. Tuberculosis is transmitted by droplet infection. Second question the most infectious form of tuberculosis in adult is option A extra pulmonary TB, option B smear positive pulmonary TB, option C smear negative TB, option D miliary TB. Here the answer is Option B. Smear positive pulmonary TB. Miliary TB is a potentially fatal form of TB. Then third question. The commonest form of tuberculosis is Option A. Extra pulmonary tuberculosis Option B. Bone and joint tuberculosis Option C. Renal TB Option D. Pulmonary TB. Here the answer is Option D. Pulmonary TB. Fourth question. When do you suspect pulmonary tuberculosis? Mention four common symptoms. First symptom. Persistent cough of two weeks or more with or without expectoration. Persistent cough of two weeks or more with or without expectoration. Second one, fever of greater than two weeks. Third one, significant weight loss. Fourth one, hemoptysis. Hemoptysis, that is blood in sputum. Then fifth question. How do you classify tuberculosis? Tuberculosis classified into two pulmonary tuberculosis, extra pulmonary tuberculosis. Uh, it also classified into definitive TB and probable TB. Pulmonary TB and extra pulmonary TB also classified into definitive TB and probable TB. Definitive TB means bacteriologically confirmed. Probable TB means clinically diagnosed. Then sixth question. Which is the surest way to diagnose pulmonary tuberculosis in an adult? Option A. Sputum smear examination. Option B. X-ray. Option D. Option C. A laser test, option D, tuberculin skin test, option E, ESR. Here the answer is option A, sputum smear examination. Sputum smear examination is the surest way to diagnose pulmonary tuberculosis in an adult. Seventh question, what may happen if you forget to heat the slide after adding the carbofusin solution? What may happen if you forget to heat the slide after adding the carbofusin solution? Answer is the heat melts the waxy cell wall and permits the absorption of the dye by the cell. The function of heat is which melts the waxy cell wall and permits the absorption of the dye by the cell. If you forget to heat the slide, it will not happen. The heat do not melt the waxy cell wall and do not permit the absorption of the dye by the cells. That's why the heat is Bacteria sputatil present and angel adinde cell wall lota dye penetrate aila karanam heat seyatha the wonder than a cell wall waxy layer melt seya pedilla. So this cell wall do not permit the absorption of the dye by this cell. So the bacteria do not take the 
color of carbon fusin then a question how will you preserve the stained slides for quality control after microscopy oil from the slides should be removed thoroughly by keeping the slide upside down on two layered tissue paper overnight okay then slides are filed in the slide box serially as in the laboratory register order then both slides should be kept a and b if one slide missing in the lab register the slot should be vacant in the box okay after microscopy oil from the slides should be removed thoroughly by keeping the slides upside down on two layered tissue paper overnight slides are filed in the slide box serially as in the laboratory register order then both slides should be kept a and b if one slide missing in the lab register that slot should be vacant in the box okay the ninth question which is the magnification of the oil immersion lens option a 4x option b 10x option c 40x option d 100x here the answer is option d 100x then next question when do you label a patient as a case of smear positive pulmonary tuberculosis when do you label a patient as a case of smear positive pulmonary tuberculosis answer is at least one smear of the sputum sample is positive for tb bacilli the patient is considered as a case of smear positive pulmonary tuberculosis at least one smear of the sputum sample that is a or b a or b one is positive for tb bacilli the patient is considered as a case of smear positive pulmonary tuberculosis next question tb can affect any part of the body is it true or false tb can affect any part of the body it is false because tb do not affect hair and nail hair and nail okay so the answer is false then ninth question patient with the three sputum smears negative for afb cannot have pulmonary tuberculosis patient with the three sputum smears negative for afb cannot have pulmonary tuberculosis it is also false because smear negative tb patient also present smear negative tb patient also present among us okay then how will you explain to a patient to bring up sputum how will you explain to a patient to bring up sputum sputum collection never in closed areas like bathrooms toilet inside the building because the tb bacilli survive 8 to 10 hours in the air then should be done in open well ventilated areas preferably in direct sunlight uh, for photolysis then cross ventilation needed ac uh, not good for collection because bacilli can survive long time in air dual exchange per hour okay then an aerosol of 10 percent sodium chloride can help loosen tenacious secretions an aerosol of 10 percent sodium chloride can help loosen tenacious secretions deep breathing helps loosen secretions and bring them to back of the throat then collection method inhale deep hold air for few seconds slowly exhale repeat the above process for three times then place both hands on the pelvis 
bend the body to get support of diaphragm for coughing then cough deep collect sputum in mouth open the container carefully transfer the sample into the container close the container tightly wash hands inhale deep hold air for few seconds slowly exhale repeat the above process three times place both hands on the pelvis bend the body to get support of diaphragm for coughing then cough deep collect sputum in mouth open the container carefully transfer the sample into the container close the container tightly wash hands next question what are the characteristics of a good quality sputum sample that are ideal sputum sample which is thick mucopurulent without much saliva colored or blood stain in sufficient quantity visual appearance right like mucopurulent saliva blood tinged okay next what are the characteristics of a poor quality sputum sample uh, it may contain much saliva and a nasal secretion uh, lot of saliva not mucopurulent okay then what may f what may happen if you forget to fix this smear what may happen if you forget to fix this smear the bacteria and stain will be washed away when drinks with water uh, the bacteria and stain will be washed away when rinse with water so if you forget to fix this smear the bacteria and the stain will be washed away when rinse with water then fifth question what may happen if you fix this smear before waiting for the sputum to dry what may happen if you fix this smear before waiting for the sputum to dry here the answer is it will increases the aerosol formation and causes bubbling of bacilli it will increases the aerosol formation and causes bubbling of bacilli bacilli become charred drying artifacts may occur so uh, if you fix this smear before waiting for sputum to dry the aerosol will form which uh, which causes bubbling of bacilli then next question what may happen if you do not filter the carbofuccin what may happen if you do not filter the carbofuccin answer is it leads to false positive result false positive result okay sometime uh, we mistaken the carbofuccin particle like a bacilli second part of the video